So today I'm going to start laying out my staging yard. How hard can that be? So I wanted to show how I'm going about uh, laying out my uh, track plans. Um, I've got to a stage where uh, I want to start laying out the next section. Um, I've, uh, I've built this much of the railway so far. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, this part here, this board turned round and it joins on to this part here. So I have a track descending, go through this hole, uh, and then it will come across this corner and round into uh, a staging yard. So I need to lay out the bit of track here in this corner with all the points and, uh, and everything going into the yard. Now that's all been carefully designed on the computer. Um, and what I do is uh, I print it out in several, on several pieces of paper, prints it out to uh, actual size. And here you see the, this section of the layout. I've managed to fit onto three pieces of A3, which is quite handy. So I just have to line them up. Um, now it's quite useful. Uh, software I've got, uh, I set up to draw 10 centimeter grid lines. So I can use those lines uh, to line up the piece of paper if there's any uh, slight inaccuracy in the printing. Um, unfortunately, the way the software works, in focus the way the software works um, it doesn't sort of make a mess of it on the edges it doesn't try and you have to choose the right options when you print but it doesn't try and scale it or fit it in or faff with a margin or anything um, it just prints out the whole piece of paper and uh, obviously you see there's a gap uh, between the joins, that's simply because the printer can't print all the way to the edge of the paper. But it hasn't affected what it tries to put on that piece of paper. And if the printer could print to the edge, I expect it would. So if I just line them up like that, that's pretty much good enough. I could get myself a tape measure. In fact, I have done this in the past to make sure it's right measure from there to there to make sure it's exactly 10 centimeters um, but I've discovered I don't need any adjustment there. so I'll have just have a little fiddle with this uh, when I'm not filming just to make sure I'm absolutely happy with it but I can then place a heavy weight not a massively heavy weight but a reasonably heavy weight there we go, something like that, or something like that, just to keep these pieces of paper in place. And then what I do is I just put a tiny, tiniest dab of wood glue uh, on the corner there, and I glue it down. Uh, and the wood glue doesn't take a it takes five minutes to hold the piece of paper. Um, and then I'm in a position to start marking up my center lines. Um, and I'll show you how I do that in a moment. And you'll see these squares. So I've put in approximately uh, the size of a tortoise point motor. So I want to just know where those are going to be. And in fact, at this stage, I can get out an actual point motor and just mark up the space it's going to use. You'll see the software has marked where, um, where the hole in the baseboard needs to be. So I can line that up exactly. Um, 
that's the hole in the baseboard uh, for the, the switching machine and the point motor to change the points. So I've glued my track plan down. Sit there. Little little doubles of glue there in the corners. And I think it's nicely lined up. So now I need to transfer the details of the track plan uh, to the piece of MDF underneath it. And the way I do that is with this little hammer and power pin. And I will hold the power pin just uh, where I want to go. Now the first thing I'll do is mark the intersections of these 10 centimeter lines. That way I can draw the grid uh, onto the MDF. And I will then mark uh, the really important bits are the center lines at the ends of the points. Just there and there. Um, and I will then mark on the curve the center lines of the curves so I can join them up. I'll also mark uh, these these pieces here they that represents the bench work. Um, so that's the corner, the far corner over there. Um, because what I need to be able to do uh, is to position this correctly on the benchwork. Now, of course, if I mark, for example, here, where the benchwork intersects with uh, the grid, I can then mark on the actual benchwork uh, where the grid is supposed to be and use that to line it up. Um, anyway, I will place Place my track pin just here and then bash it bang with this little hammer um, and that will just make a small indentation uh, and when I've done the whole made all the uh, all the marks that I want uh, across the whole track plan I can then uh, join the dots with a pencil um, before I do that, I will, I will also use the jigsaw to cut out a uh, piece that I want. I don't need a uh, piece of MDF this shape. Um, and I will probably take it up here and then round. Made a bit of progress then. Um, I've got as far as removing this first uh, piece of paper. You can see here I've started to mark up uh, the lines. So that's 10 centimeter line, 10 centimeter line across there. Um, there's a, probably a few more 10 centimeter lines across there. I'll see if I can find those. And then these are the tracks. This is the three way that I've got. You see how I've marked the, the ends of the point work, so I know exactly where to put the point work and then uh, the flex track can just follow the center lines and then I've got one, two, three, four. Uh, I've just got to go and finish these. Look carefully. There you go. You can see there's a trail of dots to follow. Oh, there's one more track that I've missed um, and I think the end of it must be somewhere going through that piece of paper so I'll have to find that here we go that there's the blob of glue and there's the center line on the end so there's the blob of, blob of glue and there's the dot so it's from there up to there and then round. So we'll crack on and get this whole thing done now. OK, 
Okay, so all the hard work's been done. <clears throat> and you can see here on my board, I have laid out uh, not just the grid lines, uh, but also the track center lines. Um, and also I've marked where the points go. Exactly, you see I have these, these end points. So that's a three way. And here I've actually positioned uh, pieces of uh, the point white just to see how it lays out. There we go. So we can get these things just right. So one of the things I'm a bit concerned about is um, the sequence of curve points and whether there's enough room just here or whether where the, uh, the switch bar of this point comes out, perhaps that maybe needs to be cut away. A little bit of detail. Hopefully that can be done without uh, destroying the point. Um, but uh, it's very close to the track. It'll come down here. That's quite a tight curve. Uh, that one and that one. That's just the way my track plan is. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about making sure that goes in right. Don't want that to be another kink, kinking, pro kink, kinky problem. There you go. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, positioning that and uh, positioning the, uh, obviously if this, if this detail here needs to come away, then the point motor needs to go on the other side. Um, and there needs to be enough subroad bed to attach the point motor to. So if the point motor's here, then this bit of uh, this bit of MDF needs to remain. So the next thing I need to do is to just work out how and exactly where I'm going to cut this out across here. I don't want it to have more than I need, um, but uh, I certainly don't want to have not enough. And you'll see here I've also marked uh, the position of the switch blades uh, for the points and where I'm going to put the point motors. I've got here an actual tortoise point motor. Uh, what I'm able to do, having placed a point in position where that's going to be. There we go. Um, I can then put a pencil through the, the hole and flip the blades back and forth and that will give me a nice little mark. So that's where the, the, the amount of movement I'm going to need for the, uh, uh, the point motor uh, through the board. So that's where my hole is going to go. Um, and I can then take the point motor, I've put the, uh, put the guide on here um, and I can just pop it down and draw around it. Uh, see I've put, uh, put all the different points in place just to see how that's going to work. But if I take them away then I'm now able to see um, where I can cut away. I obviously need to leave some material along the edge there so that the point motor has uh, something to attach to. But I can take this corner off uh, and here again uh, around this way and then I'll, I'll bring it down probably along this line somewhere. Okay all ready to cut. <laughs> I've, uh, I've marked here um, the bit that needs to be cut off. Um, another side. There we go. Around. And I've marked all the point motors, including uh, the ones for this double uh, three way here. So I just need to find the jigsaw and chop out my shape. Here's the sub-road bed, reasonably uh, in position. 
uh, where it's actually going to be on the layout. Uh, you can see there's uh, the eight tracks of the fiddle yard uh, going around the corner. And this is the single track coming in uh, after passing through uh, this, uh, this support here. And this is where the, uh, the other board will join on. So just there, there'll be uh, uh, some copper clad uh, to secure the rails in place to keep them aligned. Quite pleased with this. Um, there's enough room in the corner to get a hand up. Uh, if I need to access a piece of rolling stock on the other side there. Um, and the rest of the fiddle yard um, is not so large that I wouldn't be able to uh, grab hold of a derailed, uh, derailed train or anything like that. Um, obviously this will all be covered up, um, so I need to be able to get my hands in there, uh, maybe to clean track or maybe to uh, access uh, the rolling stock. I need to share my latest mistake with you all. Um, here are the points on the entry to my fill yard which I've uh, laid uh, uh, laid up nicely. I've uh, wired them all up. See there's wires underneath um, and each of them have a look, uh, has a black and a red and a green for the frog. I've done them all the same way. Um, can I get the focus? Can I focus? So you'll see there I soldered uh, to the underneath of the rail and the frog wire goes to the wire that connects to the frog. Um, and all of them I've done frog wire coming off the front there so it's all uh, drilling the holes is all pretty much in the same place uh, although I've been Placing each point exactly where I want it and marking where the holes need to be. Here you see those pencil marks. Um, so that's all worked out quite nicely. And actually, having done that, they all pretty much line up exactly where I want them to be. So that's good. However, what I didn't take into account when I drilled the holes is the position of the point motors underneath. And this one here in particular, you can see I've chosen to put the point motor behind uh, this point. This motor is for this point because I don't want it to clash with the motor for this point. But what it means is that the frog wire, the frog wire coming down from above for this point is going to be in the way. So I'm going to have to move that. Um, so I suppose what I've learned from this is it just makes the point how important it is to work out exactly where all your bits and bobs are going to go, where you're going to have your point motors, where your various droppers are going to be um, for each point because a piece of track work like this um, coming into the fiddle yard there's a lot of point work all in the same place. Um, next thing I'm going to have to do is to lay some flex track uh, from here to here, from here to here. I believe these are, both of those are first radius curves, uh, 228 millimeter radius, um, which is about as tight as you can go. Um, I've got a track setter here, but I obviously can't use that the whole thing. Um, but I need to be able to lay that curve correctly. If it if it doesn't curve enough it'll create a kink on either end. Um, I'm also a bit anxious about these ends of these sleepers here and I rather suspect they're going to clash with the sleepers on the on the flex track. Um, so that's going to be the next problem to sort out. Anyway, making some progress, uh, two steps forward, one step back, as usual. It's turned upside down, uh, tracks on the underside of this, and uh, these are all the dropper wires for each point coming through, and a green wire for each frog. 
This whole thing's white because I put this white primer on it, but uh, I think I've decided I'd be better off with a, a different uh, MDF sealant product. Anyway, um, what I'm doing is I'm putting these pads down in order to hold the tortoise point motors. So there's all these large holes, that's where the linkage goes through from the motor to drive the point. And here on the actual point motor, you will see there's space for four screws and also a hole um, in this fulcrum. Fulcrum moves up and down so you can adjust how far the linkage swings. Um, but it goes through the hole in the middle. So that hole there has to match this hole here in the baseboard. And you have to work out where to attach this. Now if I just had a go, you know, popped it there somewhere. I'm sure that might be all right. Um, but better to be a bit more precise. So um, I suppose what I could do is put that down there and then place that over the middle. Um, but that would still give me the problem that this is only 6mm MDF, uh, so it's not going to do very well holding a screw. So what I'm doing is cutting out these uh, these little pads, and there's another 6mm of MDF, and I can then mark up the holes. Um, the point motors actually come with a template to help you mark those holes anyway. I think positioning the point motor precisely is pretty important. Um, but I can do that and I then use a 6mm bolt uh, just to align this hole with the, the hole in the baseboard. And I can then glue that down. And then once it, the glue's gone off, I can pop the point motor there, put some screws in, uh, and I'm pretty happy about the positioning. So that's what I'm doing. So once I've done that, I can then wire up um, these. So this can go to here uh, along with the frog, and then my bus wire can come to here as well. So I've laid all my track out, um, I've pinned it down, I've got all the droppers on, I've got all the right joiners in place. That one's just come apart for a moment. Um, so I think I'm now ready to use the copy decks um, and to glue the track down. Uh, so I put the glue under and then I use these, uh, oops, these pins. Uh, just to hold it in place positionally. Um, I drill a small hole for these because they're a bit big bush through MDF, but they fit very snugly between the rails. There you go. So they're just perfect for doing that. So I'll see you in a moment once I've got it all glued down. There we go, all done. So I splash some copy decks around. Um, obviously not very neatly, but it'll be enough to hold things in place. These are bits of flex track. They're well covered, so that's what's important. And also, just to make sure there's no glue near the uh, switch blades there. And whatever that's called, I can't remember. Um, so that's okay, and I'll just put some bits of wood and some clamps across just to hold it down and uh, let that dry but that's good and uh, once that's all done I just need to make sure that uh, everything runs nice and smooth it's all exactly as I wanted it to be the electrics are all connected and so on there is a little confession I have to make and that is when I try to join this rail here, this one, I struggled to get it to join end on with a, an insulated fish plate just there. 
Um, the inside of fish plates are made of plastic, and so they aren't quite as rigid as the metal ones. So in order to make uh, those rails join such that I don't end up with a derailment, actually that feels quite good. That's okay now. Um, but I've used a metal fish plate there. And the effect of that is it extends the frog, which is this bit here, along this rail. Now that doesn't matter, I don't think, because I've added an insulated fish plate there. Um, so I'm not going to cause a short, but it's slightly unusual because it means I have a frog that extends all the way to here. But because of the nature of this bit of track, and there's a whole bunch of uh, points opening up, I'm at no point going to want to park a train on, on this stretch. Uh, and then switch this point. Um, we'll see if there's something there and then this point then switches across. That's going to cause a short. Um, but this is only, what, two inches long? Um, and uh, all the trends coming here are just going to be running down and then into whichever siding they're assigned to. So I don't think that's going to cause me a problem. But I do have to confess that that was the only way I could get those rails to line up just right. It's the challenge of getting this short piece of track to bend. That's a 9 inch 22 to 8 millimeter first radius curve. And it's only that long, so the only way of doing it was to make sure it's pre bent. Uh, and to do that, I took each of the rails out and individually bent them before feeding them back into the sleepers. I think that's going to work. So I've got another confession to make. It's obviously good for the soul. Um, here's the track uh, having been glued down. And uh, it's mostly, uh, glue's mostly gone off. It's mostly dry. And... Uh, tracks sort of it's certainly rigid to the touch so that's good um, but just here it's not I obviously had an extra large blob of glue there which doesn't matter so much I'm sure it'll um, it'll dry eventually but of course it's directly underneath uh, the switch blades um, and what I don't want to do is to glue the switch blades in place. So that's just another um, another example of another little mistake you can make. Um, every uh, every time I do one of these, I, I learn something else that I should check as I'm going along. Um, and I suppose that's what this is all about. It's all about making mistakes uh, and refining, refining the skills and the techniques um, as a result. Maybe by the time I finish building this layout, I'll know how to make a layout and I'll, uh, I'll be ready to throw it all away and start again. So I'll wrap things up there. I'm pretty pleased with the progress I've made, but I'm not able to complete that section of track because I'm still waiting on a three-way point. It's quite hard during the lockdown to uh, get all the pieces that, uh, that you need. I'm also grateful to those of you uh, who have uh, subscribed or, or commented on my videos. Um, I understand that all helps with the YouTube uh, machine, but uh, to be honest, uh, working YouTube's a little bit beyond me at the moment. I hope that you'll join me next week when I'm gonna be trying to install the point motors uh, and wire them up so that I can control uh, the points on the entry to my staging guard remotely.